how are you seeing contractors, you know, managing this from two spectrums? The ones who you think are not doing it the right way, and then the ones that are doing it correctly. Like, uh, how are each sides managing, uh, you know, or mitigating risk transfer today? That's a great question. They, you know, obviously there are, are different sizes and scopes and sophistication levels for every client. You know, it, in, in this market with, with real low turnover and, you know, low unemployment rates, it, it can be very difficult to find good people, you know, it, and, and a lot of times with a smaller, less sophisticated operation, this responsibility will fall on someone who's in an administrative role that may or may not have experience with risk transfer uh, or with managing certificates of insurance. And a, a lot of times you see people will put systems in place and create spreadsheets. You know, they may even have a three ring binder where they have all of their certificates in one place. And they endeavor and work really hard to make sure that they've got proof of coverage for everyone. They'll typically go back and review whatever system they have in place before they cut a check to a contractor, because as the prime contractor, the easiest way to make sure someone gets the coverages that you need is to not pay them until they have it. And depending on how the contract is written, the prime contractor could be well within their rights to do so. So, you know, that that's one component of it. The, the other is the prime contractor typically has to rely on their subs agent to provide this certificate of insurance. And there can be a lot of back and forth in that process. Uh, you know, when, when you receive a certificate of insurance and it doesn't have the proper language, then the individual task with monitoring all this is then forced to go back to the client who will go back to their agent. So there's, there's a lot of back and forth and it can be very time consuming, you know, and then the, you also have folks that, that work with a third party, you know, that have systems in place, whether it be software or, you know, a, an attorney that they have on retainer to, to review everything, which can get quite expensive, but it really depends on the level of sophistication. And from my perspective, people don't tend to take it seriously until after they have a, a, an uncovered claim or they have an issue where they, they then realize that, you know, we don't have necessarily the system in place. Um, that can also happen at audit time because the certificate of liability is very important to the audit process. Oftentimes, if a contractor has subcontractors and they haven't properly, and their subcontractors haven't maintained the level of insurance that was required, or maybe they had a lapse in coverage, the prime contractor can actually incur more premium at audit because their subcontractor wasn't properly insured. It can get even more intense than that in a situation where there's an endorsement on the prime contractor's liability policy that warrants specifically that all of the subs are going to carry a specific level of insurance. And we call that a, a hard hammer clause because the, the GL policy is designed to pick up uninsured subcontractors, you know, depending on the situation. But if um, there's an endorsement that says, hey, you're subs have to have this level of coverage, this type of additional insured endorsement, and this type of hold harmless language. If not, we're going to increase the deductible for that claim from let's say 5,000 to 25. Or in, in some instances, if they don't have the proper coverage, then there can be no coverage at all on the prime contractor's policy if the sub wasn't properly insured. So there's a lot at stake when it comes to, you know, managing your subcontractors and their insurance programs and making sure that they're meeting your insurance requirements. Because all of these contracts between the prime contractor, the subcontractor, the subcontractor's insurance policy, the prime contractor's insurance policy, all of those work in tandem to make sure that everyone is properly indemnifying each other. 